Does somebody need to make a motion to open the meeting? Make a Is motion that that to works? open the meeting. <laughs> Tom's the vice he, chair, right? I'm trying to get Bobby right now. He's having trouble getting in. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, do you want me to just um, start with uh, my director's report? Once Bobby shows up, we can vote on the minutes and and discuss the budget, or do we want to hang out a little bit more? Tom, you might tell uh, Bobby to go to the Deerfield website, the town of Deerfield website. Go, you hit the calendar, and then it will pop up the meeting, and then the meeting you hit the meeting, and it gives the agenda with the Zoom. Clickable Zoom. And the agenda's on all the emails that. Yeah, but it's not click, not necessarily clickable. That's weird. That's how I got there. Anyway, why don't you start, Zach? And and because yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, sounds good. So first off, just operationally, I you know there really isn't much to talk about. Um, we're just dealing with COVID. Um, our call volume is slowly returning back to. Um, Pre-COVID levels, we'll call it. We saw that uh, precipitous drop in the early part of the year. It's kind of returned back. And the other thing that I've noticed is the nature of the calls that we are returning to are now just by the seat of my pants feeling like a more typical, normal type call, meaning that people who were reluctant to call 911 before are now um, calling 911 for their normal issues. Now, if you look at the COVID numbers, we're back to and beyond where we were in the beginning part of the year. So if we see any sort of uh, lockdown again or really strict public health messaging as far as people staying home and the dangers that COVID place, I would anticipate seeing another drop in, in calls. But we're not seeing that from uh, public health experts um, for reasons. So... Our call volume is returning, but it's still, I guess, um, I don't know what the phrase for it is, but it's it's definitely calmer than it's it's been. Our staff, we are 100% uh, uh, social distancing and face coverings uh, when we can't do that in the station, at work, in the vehicles, um, stuff like that. So thankfully our station's large enough that we can uh, segregate ourselves away from each other uh, normally during the day, but anytime we're in a vehicle together or we're in the same room doing anything, we are wearing masks. Uh, thankfully, as a result, we haven't had any sort of, we haven't had any staff members that have been diagnosed uh, with COVID and we haven't had any sort of um, secondary tertiary effects of a COVID exposure. We are no unprotected exposures during the course of our business and if somebody were to be exposed um, either outside of work or at work because of our social distancing and our mask wearing at work, that will help mitigate any concerns as far as unprotected exposures um, here. Uh, we still have the ongoing issue of, um, you know, so much of our, our full-time staff covers that one ambulance 24 seven, except for that one shift a week. Our per diems are all full-time EMS providers elsewhere. So they are being pulled to their full-time jobs typically. And a lot of those places have put directives out that they don't want their employees working um, second jobs, third jobs, also in the healthcare field. We've done something similar here just to limit the potential for cross exposure. Um, but it means that uh, a, a greater percentage of our impact shifts are going unfilled um, and we're, uh, Having to go, it's it's nothing crazy, but having to use overtime more frequently for sick call outs and things like that, just because we don't have those per diems to pull from. So, um, but we, we've been staffing fine. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on employee burnout. There's no concerns there um, currently. So um, I think we're on top of that stuff. Uh, otherwise business as usual. Um, the next thing on my list is budget. Uh, do we want to just get to the budget? I don't know if. Uh... Yeah, um, I, I just to reassure people that um, because we've always been so conservative about estimating our runs. And um, so even though the revenue Zach's talking about revenue, it's it's we're fine still. 
because we always underestimate in general the revenues from a conservative point of view. Yeah, all right. Um, so this is a uh, version 1.0 of the FY22 budget. Uh, it's dated 11, 18, 20. Uh, and in the copy that I sent out, um, I highlighted the fields um, that are still uh, like really like up in the air waiting for somebody else to come in with those numbers and that's employee benefits and in the town of Deerfield indirect costs. Um, other than that, uh, the salaries and wages, those are calculated. Um, the customary step increase for all the full-time staff and not knowing or having any sort of guidance yet from personnel committee, finance committee or anything like that. Uh, on top of the step, I threw in a 2% COLA um, just to get some numbers in there that I anticipate are probably, you know, we're not going to exceed that. Um, so that's what those salary numbers are, those increases there. Um, my, myself and one other employee uh, were maxed out. We're not getting the steps. So that would just be the, whatever the COLA is for us. Uh, employee benefits, I base those off of the formulas that I have and have every year overshot what the actual numbers are that we get back from Barbara eventually. Um, I, and to a significant degree, I, like even, um, even, you know, 50, $60,000 higher than what they turn out to be. So those numbers I expect to come down as well. These are just placeholders uh, based on those. Um, who was that? User guest. Oh. Who just who just entered the uh, the Gary. meeting? It's Gary. Hey, Gary. Exciting. All right. Gary's here. Oh, and, uh, and, going... and Gary's wife. Oh, neat. <laughs> um, uh, Gary, it was down... great. Lola, it's good to see you. You do. <laughs> <laughs> How to get on? <laughs> we need a kid to the party. <laughs> uh, Gary, I just mentioned uh, salaries are just uh, and employee benefits. We're just waiting for some final numbers from uh, the town of Deerfield for those. But I estimated high on those things uh, for this first budget. Um, expenses, uh, probably not really expecting any sort of. Uh, significant changes there. Fuel um, looked to be right spot on around $10,000 a year. That looked like a pretty accurate uh, estimation from the last year's budget. Uh, medical equipment repairs and maintenance, that's all um, preventive maintenance contracts and stuff. So those numbers aren't going to go up. Medications, ALS supplies, those are all consistent. Uh, vehicle repairs and maintenance, I got to go back and pull some of those numbers out. We, it, is, was up to $22,000 last year. And we finally got rid of that international and we're, I, I'm confident we're not gonna get anywhere near that. So I've got to pull those numbers and, and bring that one down to a more appropriate level. Um, rent's not going anywhere. Billing should be the same. Uh, certainly won't be going up. That's a percentage of our collection. So if call volume's down, that goes down. And software, that's all set those won't go up what about um, capital capital um yeah i got two items for capital i will mention one last thing in the expense <clears throat> is the town of deerfield indirects um costs uh i just i just threw in a number there that was i think two percent higher than mm -hmm. the previous years we'll need the town of deerfield to calculate that based on their formulas. Um, and then the other post-employment ben benefits is a percentage based on the insurance costs. So that is accurate relative to how accurate the insurance costs are. So once we get that number, um, that will be drilled in a little bit more. So I don't know which direction those numbers will go, um, but those are still in flux. Um, 
Who'd I miss? Who just came in? Oh, hey. Bobby. Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Dr. Ahern. This is way too high tech for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. We, we, we can tell when we see more of your gut than your face, Bobby. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's uh, let's out see. on the ocean. Uh, that Thinking us. happy thoughts. Yes. Good. Uh, I do want to talk about bottom line, uh, the revenue there. Um, last year, I estimated $525,000 in billing revenue. I'm keeping it at that number as well. That's always historically been a little conservative. And I think thanks to that conservativeness, um, we're okay for this fiscal year, even with the dip in our call volume that we sustained. Um, I'm glad that that happened over the span of two fiscal years. That certainly helped. Um, and under shooting that only means that Anything we make above that is just going to go back into retained earnings back against the following year's budget. So um, so I, I feel good about leaving it at the five hundred and twenty five thousand. Uh, let's see. And so with all of that, the bottom line is this version one budget um, shows an increase of one point two seven percent over last year. That's for level services. Um, no changes in staffing or equipment or anything like that. And I think that will likely come down once we get the final numbers from Barbara, as far as the employee benefits go. Um, the capital requests. <clears throat> so I, we do have I, to vote on the capital request because Zach's got to get them in by December 1st. Yeah. Um, so so I, can I ask, hey, Zach, can I ask one question first? Yeah. On oh, please. Earnings, that number is looking like it's getting larger and larger and, and um, people are going to be asking about that. Yeah, um, that is, uh, it, it, it will get larger every year until we buy that new ambulance. Right. Um, yeah, so, and, and I, uh, where is that? I've got too many sheets in front of me. Um, what are we putting away a year? For like 52,000 a year for? Yeah. Oh, 60, $62,500 a year um, of retained earnings are being put aside. So every year in the least you will see that number grow by that much and what's the estimated uh date of purchase for for our next vehicle uh fiscal year 24 no so two, two years 20, 25 it gets confusing because uh the model year the tr truck is an fy19 i think we took delivery in fy20 but the beginning part of FY20, so that's fiscal year 19. So five, five years later would be fiscal year 24. Yeah, two and, more years. And, and, and what's the, what are we anticipating the cost being on that? Um, in the neighborhood of 250,000. And that is, yes, right, exactly. So that $62,500 a year is a four-year replacement schedule to 250, but I don't know. The uh, Turners just spec'd an ambulance this year and it came in right at 250. So another two years from now, um, it's gonna be north of that, um, but we'll have a trade, so, so I don't know. We'll start talking about that in two years. Okay, yeah, I just I just want us all to be prepared for questions that will come up from finance committees and, and other other people about the eight eight twenty four number. Yeah. Um, well, Zach, I, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting because now you have three good buses, right? So it'll it, it, it'll be interesting to see how how your mileage. I mean, you, there was an S estimate that you need to re replace every four or five years but i mean if if you're not putting the mileage on the the units uh, and and you go, and you look at the maintenance i mean we're kind of in new new territory right now so yeah i i don't disagree that third line truck right now is a 2007 um yeah, yeah. so it, it's getting long in the teeth but we're not using it nearly as much as we did when we had the international so um yeah you're absolutely right um, these two trucks have been really good um, so far. So, yeah, I let's 
in two years, we'll have to see where we are. I don't think it's a given that we'll need to replace one then. Um, but well, I, I, I guess my point is that that we need to at least have a conversation about whether we should be returning some percentage to towns um, because of all these variables. I don't want to. I don't want to get get us caught with our pants down. Um, that being said, uh, we need to be understanding that people are going to start to bring this up. And it's, and it's understandable a little bit because I don't think we want that number to get close to seven figures. From an optics perspective, I think that would be very bad. Yeah, Anybody else um, want to disagree or agree with that? No, I, I mean, I agree. I think everybody would be thrilled to have less expenses. So, right. You know, so, so maybe the conversation can be at some point whether we can afford to give back at least some small percentage to show that we are aware of the need to. Yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, I, uh, the ultimate goal I would like would be to get that estimated revenue from billing up and closer to where we're confident it will be every year, which will decrease the amount of retained earnings we have every year. Cause right, you know, like, right, like right now we're kind of like this and it just goes back into the budget. Um, and so if we can do that, the optics of having a, a lower amount of retained earnings going back and being more closely budgeted to um, actuality. Yeah, I agree. I'm just a little trigger shy right now about with COVID and what our run calls run <laughs> volume will do. Okay. The other piece to keep in mind here is if you look across the assessment to member towns, when we started this, the assessment was $750,000. You know, it's at 578 current year estimated at 640. And it sounds like that number is going to come down. So it's actually a service that has decreased cost to the member towns over time. And I, I hate to say it, but I challenge any other department in any of our towns to ask which ones have provided as good a service or the level of service and decrease their cost over time. Yeah, that, that's a very, very, I mean, it's, it's looking at all the data points yeah. and, and being able to explain where we are for the entire budget. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, so I just want to be able to have all these conversations, but Matt, no, you're right. I, I understand. I mean, I guess I look at the retained earnings as kind of our, I hate to say it, use the term of a piggy bank, but you know, we've got a couple of cap capital projects that Zach's got listed for this year. As much as we love the building and we're thankful it was given to us and built for us without cost, there are some things that we're going to need to look at down the line to improve it. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be some additional projects that will have to be done. And it'd be nice to be able to fund that out of what we have versus having to go back and ask for any additional money for it. All right. Um, capital. So as mentioned, I've got uh, two capital projects. Both of these are addressing um, needs deficiencies in the facility as it was donated I, it's a great facility don't get me wrong um but certainly you know when it was designed um it was designed you know by people who didn't kind of understand what we were dealing with and um the first project uh capital project i have is for an addition to our um asphalt to the front and the north side of the building um right now the asphalt is short enough at the front of the building that we can't actually pull an ambulance in front of the building straight to back it up straight. Um, we can only pull it up at an angle and then we have to turn as we back up. Um, the result obviously is you increase the chance that you're gonna have a building strike. You always wanna back up straight whenever possible, especially in a, a vehicle like this, you only have your side mirrors and um, a rear camera that kind of looks straight down to aid you. So you always want to back up straight. The other thing it's doing is we're chewing up 
the very edge of the tarmac or we're actually falling into the grass with the nose of the ambulance every time that we're, we're doing that. Also, because it's too short, um, anytime we have a vehicle, either one of the ambulances pulled out or a visitor to the station, such as uh, radio repair, um, uh, a delivery, anything like that, you can't pull an ambulance out of the station and around them um, without having to do basically a three point turn um, or driving on the grass. So we can, oh, and we don't have any sort of um, parking for visitors either. So they often pull in and there's no good spot for them to go. Um, so part of this would be to extend that out just simply 10 feet um, on the front of the building. That would give us enough room that we could pull straight and then back straight. It would also give a spot to put a couple visitor parking spots um, off to the side, clearly labeled where somebody could pull in and not interfere with our, with our operations. Um, the other thing that uh, part of this project would be to extend the asphalt to the north of the building. Um, and that would be designated staff parking right now. All of the employees, including our uh, quick response vehicle, are parked in the South Deerfield parking lot. And they're very gracious, you know, to afford us a few spaces for that. Um, but it means that uh, we're in their lot. That's where we land the helicopter. That's where they do driver training. Um, they pull their hoses out. Um, whenever they have an event at their facility, um, we're in the way, they're in our way. And the snow removal operations, those big highway trucks, uh, idle and park and, and pull through there. Um, it also means that when we come and go, we walk across a lawn in through the front door of our station into the public admin area by putting the asphalt to the north of the building and making that employee parking. There's a door right there. So um, staff would be able to come in right through that door immediately into the bay where their lockers are um, and either change their boots or take their jacket off or do things like that without having to traipse through the entire building. Uh, there was uh, the South Deerfield Fire Department just recently redid their lot. Uh, Kevin Scarborough was involved with that by nature of his involvement with the fire department and was working closely with them. Um, and he gave me kind of an off the shoot from the hip ballpark figure of $25,000 to achieve those small uh, asphalt additions that we're looking for to our facility. That's based on his experience as the public works superintendent and having just dealt with that project right next door and also paving throughout the town. Um, so that is um, estimated at $25,000 uh, without any sort of bids or anything going out. I would, I would be expecting to work with Kevin closely on that, seeing as how it's a, a Zach, Deerfield building. Zach, does that include any uh, groundwork or anything, ground prep? That was my understanding, um, <clears throat> was, was that was the number he thought. And um, that's the best I can tell you right now. Uh, the other capital project um, would be for the diesel exhaust capture and removal system. So this is standard of care in any sort of facility that um, people are in, especially 24 seven with diesel vehicles that are starting and leaving or backing into uh, diesel exhaust is a known carcinogen. Um, it also it, um, contains nitrogen oxides, which cause lung, uh, lung damage, um, it exacerbates things like asthma, uh, lowers a person's resistance to respiratory infection and disease. And these particulates are smaller than what we can see with the human eye. So every time you start up a diesel truck, you get a, a big influx of that and it gets projected into the environment, into the bay, it makes its way into um, buildings. And for decades now, it's been recognized that uh, in fire departments and EMS agencies, um, particularly where people are living 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, that you don't want to expose them to these harmful chemicals. Um, the other thing that ex exacerbates this is that our staff lockers, our washer and dryer, um, our medical equipment, expensive medical equipment um, are all in the bay. That's where our storage is and our clean medical storeroom is immediately, immediately off the bay. Um, and that door is often open just by nature of restocking the ambulances. So um, this source 
capture system is um, it attaches to the exhaust pipe on the vehicle. Um, the new versions are by electromagnet, so they don't require any sort of air compressor system <laughs> that we don't otherwise have in our uh, department. So electromagnet, when you're backing the vehicle in, um, your staff member gets out, they attach the, the hose as you enter the bay and mm -hmm. it captures that exhaust and it remains on it when you start the truck to leave. It senses the exhaust, it evacuates it uh, immediately outside, keeps it from staying in the building. Um, and then it's on a track. And as you get to the end of the track, the electromagnetic gives way and um, you just drive out. The, uh, the very well-known company for this, um, they actually just completed installation at the South Deerfield Fire District. Um, and I reached out to him uh, for budgeting purposes, just a, a casual idea of what this would cost. And he stated that for one bay and the base installation, it's $12,500. Each additional bay is $6,800 for the equipment. Um, and then that does not include any sort of site electrical work, which there would be some minimal work. Um, the, the system they use is designed for low amperage um, exhaust fans. Um, but the estimate there would be approximately $30,000 for that system. Um, and that would be... Um, that would take care of those, those carcinogens and protect our staff as well as the equipment. Um, so both of these things, the asphalt for 25,000, the diesel exhaust capture removal for 30,000, uh, it was my opinion that this is exactly the type of thing that the rent money that we've put aside uh, mm -hmm. should go to pay for. We don't have any sort of pressing needs. The building is so young still. We don't have roofs we have to worry about. We don't have HVAC we have to worry about. Um, that money is accumulating, I think, for exactly this type of thing, this investment into the facility, making it um, better and safer. Um, <laughs> and that would be um, what, what I think would make the, the most sense for that. Um, I, I agree on this. Um, and I think also, um, Zach, what, where does the, this attach? Is this attach in the ceiling? Yeah, there's, um, they basically uh, hang a like a track from the ceiling. And then there's a large um, reinforced hose that comes down and has an elbow and a handle at waist height with the electromagnet. Um, and so that just is kind of suspended in midair and rolls with the ambulance. Uh, the only other thing I could think of is, you know, we, we really need to get some storage units, you know, some kind of storage on those back walls. Whether uh, We just, yeah. We just had um, some shelving delivered. I just got a donation of some extra um, lockers and stuff for those things. So that, that's, that's being sorted out back there. Um, so, so those items you know, will be protected and, and stored that way, uh, which is a good point. It, the, the, nothing can protect from the diesel particulate. Um, it just gets in through every you know, microscopic stuff, but yeah. No, no. But but as I, when you were doing the work, I just wanted to make sure that we address some of the storage issues as well. And, and again, this would be coming out of the same, you know, to me, it's rent money. Does, is Zach, does the back wall still look like my attic? No, it looks much better now. I haven't seen your attic, so I'm assuming you meant that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's That's much like better. everybody's we did a, attic. Exactly. <laughs> um, we, we did a, a pretty thorough spring cleaning and organizing. Um, and with those new racks, it's 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 much nicer. Okay. the The one thing I was thinking about w in terms of in terms of the revenue stream for the for for both of the capital projects is I, I don't know what's in the stabilization account. Um, is it seventy two now, or is it going to be upwards of of a hundred soon? Caroline. Caroline, yeah, Caroline, you're, you're muted. muted. You're muted. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, I, I honestly can't remember, Jonathan, but I, I think it's in the 70s already. Yeah, so I'm wondering whether, just because we don't want to spend that to zero, whether the certainly the 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 expansion of the driveway would be the perfect thing for the for that fund, but I wonder whether the earned the um retained earnings would be a, an appropriate way to spend for 
the filtration uh, for um, the 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 um, exhaust pieces. I would agree. If we're looking for a way to do something with some of that money, one or both projects. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to do the 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 um, driveway because a it's kind of we we want to set that precedent okay. um, of of that of that stream, um, but you know you you could you could look at it as more of a safety issue for the employees on the on, on the um, filtration piece, and maybe that's more appropriate for the retained earnings. Um, because it, you could argue that it's not a straight capital building capital expense. I don't know. I'm just, and because we've got the money there and, and I, and I really don't want to spend down the entirety of, of the stabilization. I, I just wonder. I think that makes sense. For the it, it can go either way. I mean, obviously this is, it's employee safety and, and it'll ultimately affect our operational costs because you'll have supposedly less sick time and potentially more <coughs> disability time. So I, you know, you could argue either way. Yeah. It's also building maintenance because by installing that system besides the employee safety, you're probably going to keep the inside of that garage cleaner. Um, so it might result in less paint, might result in less filter changes, you know, less uh, wear and tear on some of the other equipment that's in there. Well, why don't we why don't we shore up our numbers in terms of what what that account is going to look like at the end of this current fiscal year, and then make that decision at that at that point. But we can still we can approve the two capital projects. We just need to figure out how we're going to fund it afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah. What Zach can do is if once we work on the numbers, we can figure out exactly how we want to do it. But what we could do is, um, you know, let have Zach submit the capital improvement requests to the capital committee on. Um, you're muted again, Carolyn. I think I think it's her connection up way up high altitude way there. Hills. <laughs> Just go. Everybody, go thumbs up to Carolyn. Yeah, Elizabeth. totally. I, I think go, thumbs Carolyn. up. Yeah, that's um, good. As far as the, the the capital request goes, the narrative is the same. I mean, if, if it's being paid for out of retained earnings or the building fund, either way, it, it's not an you know additional, you know levy against the taxpayers or whatever so right. that that money is already there for the for this type of thing and i think that's important that narrative is we're going to make these improvements and it's not going to drive the cost up at all right right, right. and once we make the and as long as the application is in we could change when to go zach go, goes to do the presentation he has plenty of time to change where the source of the money comes from right okay so do we need a motion on both the uh Capital requests. So moved. I'm sorry, Bobby. I'm doing your job for you. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jonathan just made a uh, motion. Second. Any more discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Wow. Oh. Hey, Zach, let's make sure that driveway is large 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 enough so we're not saying oh we need another 10 feet down the road yeah my plan is to go all the way up to the tracks probably put it over and then take that field on the other side of the track so they want to put the soccer field we'll just beautiful. put asphalt the whole way beautiful nothing okay all right i got one or two smiles there all right thanks Did that pass by the way in deerfield i i think uh yes carolyn I did it pass she's muted she has no idea oh there yeah no <laughs> we, yes we we are moving forward with the park in the fields okay one two three four five six what else you got there mr zach uh nothing 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 that's that's it. Um, 
the uh, looking at uh, next year's meetings following the same uh, monthly of uh, same months that we did this year. Uh, it would be January, February, March, June, September, November. Um, that sounds good. Okay, great. So then that would make the next meeting January 21st. That is the third Thursday. And assuming... you can mark it down and we'll change it if we need to. Sounds good. Um, so by then I'll get these capital requests. They're, they're due um, December 1st in Deerfield. I'll get those in. I'll keep working on these numbers um, and provide you with updated budgets as I can. Anything, uh, anything left? Anything we want to talk about? Thanks for your good work. Yep, this is great. Hey, uh, Zach, just make sure the guys uh, that were on the call get all the help they need, okay? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, Tom. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, and if you get that name from uh, Jonathan to check on that also. Yep. I mean, I just make, I, and again, we, we all know it's, it's not easy. Okay. Just make sure everybody gets the help that they need. Yeah. Great. Certainly, Thank you. We appreciate your efforts as well as the efforts of the entire team and in, in making the service what it is and doing what you guys do. It is, uh, it's certainly appreciated. Ditto. Ditto. Hey, yeah. I, I guess before I get on, you know, Jonathan, we talked about this last year and probably may not be too early to start. And I know COVID screwed us up, but some type of, um, Employee recognition. Yeah, COVID messed us up. I mean, I've been I, thinking about that a lot, and I understand. You can um, go out on the boat. You take. You can take them skiing. COVID related, we could buy them a meal somewhere, and like they could go pick it up themselves, or you know. <laughs> I, I I think that I think that we uh, deliver a meal to them. Yeah, when they're well, working. Yeah, and Tom, to your point, uh, Bob, whether it's we cater something in for the group or, I, you know, if there's a restaurant and you know, send them out for a meal, I don't. We got Chef Tomas here. We can do we can do a brisket. Hey, I'm you know I'm all for that. I don't you know I I go back to Zach to find out you know what we've got for vegetarians or uh, you know folks who don't eat meat that we need to worry about, but. I can, you know, Matt, maybe flavor. I sort of, I sort of didn't move forward on the, on the larger celebration, you know, public thing because of COVID. Yeah. Um, and I, I wonder whether we want to do something sort of smaller and temporary for, for staff as staff recognition. And then when, when, you know, maybe end of summer when things are close to getting back to normal, We'll have That's a small park estimate. Obviously, we can do the the, the larger public recognition of, of of and have the open house and have whatever we want to plan. Um, yeah, you know, perhaps by then Treehouse will be up and running, and they want to help sponsor something to recognize the EMS. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I think after this is all over, we're going to have the Roaring Twenties version 2.0 for about a decade. Yeah, it'd be a great way to kick it off. Yeah. Well, we're gonna invite you all to the Deerfield's 350th, so be thinking of it. <laughs> well, and we've got the 250th coming up in Waitley, so I know. Yeah, but we're I guess have we're, that, not, we're not the same year this year too. No, ours is the following Waitley, year yeah. after Waitley. Um, I, you know, uh, COVID did screw up some stuff, and remember we were talking about that pilot, uh, Zach, where the um, EMTs were, or paramedics were going to go and deliver telehealth kind of stuff. Ha, is have you heard any more about that, or is that just dead until COVID's over? Uh, the mobile integrated health community paramedicine stuff. Yeah. Um, a lot of politics got in the way as they are wont to do. Uh, you can apply for a license to provide those services, but they deliberately made the license so expensive for the purpose of requiring basically a hospital to subsidize your program. I think they were afraid that a small service might try to take it on and then just basically abandon it and abandon all the patients. So it's 
tens of thousands of dollars every year to apply for the license and you need a hospital, you need your affiliated hospital to support you. And our affiliated hospital, Bay State, has actually chosen to provide mobile integrated healthcare through um, contracting it out to a different company. So that basically leaves us in a lurch. We can still provide, you know, the, the support at the flu clinics. We can do the blood pressure stuff. We can do all those other things that we're so good at doing already. Um, but as far as mobile integrated healthcare and billing for it and getting reimbursed separately, um, that window has closed to services like ours, at least for the time being. Speaking of EDS, I just want to mention that it was wonderful um, to have South County EMS at our EDS drills. Um, both were very successful. We did 647 vaccinations and it's not as fast going through the highway garage, but um, we can do a winter or heat in the summer. Either way, um, we have a protected space. So we're, we're ready. Carolyn, I, I had gone through and I got my flu shot there. I thought it went very well. Um, I guess my only thing is if you had to do that in mass or a bigger number, it might be easier if you assign people by times as opposed to you know, letting them just come in and line up. But I thought it was a great way to keep all those folks providing the services out of the weather to be able to do we, what they um, do. We hadn't had free vaccine for about six years. So truthfully, um, our focus was just trying to get our volunteers up and running. Mm -hmm. And actually, even though we had more than 50% new bodies, you know, new volunteers, it, it it went really well. And um, we would have, we should have had more lanes. We could have used another lane in the highway garage, but yes, you're right. We would try to do it through like alphabetical assignment or something like that, you know, to, so people wouldn't have to worry about lining up and we would, you know, have the same efficiency. Hey, Zach, just a thought, um, to try to get around the hospital issue I wonder if there'd be any appetite by a local representative to try to sponsor us to get grant money to work with Franklin County Healthcare, I apologize, the organization that Allie's with. Community Health. Uh, yeah, no. the Community Health Center. I, I, I'm certainly, uh, we, are, we are actively, as South County EMS, involved in participating with things like the opioid task force and the community health center through like the committees and organizations that they are creating. Um, Franklin County opioid task force just uh, also received a huge grant to create a 24 seven response team for um, overdoses um, that will follow up with people immediately. So, you know, we're looking to kind of involve ourselves with that as well. I, yeah, I think th there's certainly Aside from the MIH, yeah, there there are avenues here where South County EMS can certainly um, help and provide the services that where we already have. Okay, I just try to think out of the box, and I, I hate to say it, we we've, we've been creative in the past, and we've done some great things. We've gotten some grant money. Um, you know, I go back to years ago when they got the grant money to put a bunch of us through intermediate school, and then some folks wanted to become paramedics. But we've got some new um, some new representation that might be willing to go to bat for us and do some creative things. I mean, we've had the we've been able to provide the results in the past, and I think it might be a, an opportunity in the future if it presents itself. To Doesn't start. hurt to ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I just want to circle back. I, I'm not trying to beat the dead horse here, but some kind of a meal recognition for the team that's there. Should we do something between now and the end of the year as a thank you, have something catered in for the group and then do something again at, you know, towards the end of the summer? Being yeah, that's what I was suggesting. Yeah, this year? I think that's a good idea. Let me um, let me pull the staff and brainstorm on this. Uh, okay. A lot of us have gained a lot of COVID weight because uh, everybody's been delivering us candy and cupcakes and things like that. Um, okay. And uh, we had uh, Franklin County Meal Train come through. We had 
um, like bubs cater for us and donate a lot of food. I think we're still kind of recovering from all of that stuff. Uh, the other thing too, is, uh, all of our staff, you know, is spread out over a week. Um, so I, I, I agree. I, I think I, it would be great to do something for everybody. Um, let me figure out what that would look like. Um, and let you know. All right. And if it's not that, I mean, would we be okay with giving everybody, I don't know if it's a weekly in gift card for dinner or, you know, some type of place where they could even grocery store gift card, take yeah. a significant other out for dinner as a thank you, because as much as, yeah. as much as it's stress on the person at work, there's also stress for the, the other person who's at home. Yeah. You know, worry yeah. and concern because they share the risk when their loved one comes home after caring for people all day as well. So, um, let, let let me figure out what will be most appreciated and and uh, and we'll make it happen. Okay, sounds like a plan. Do we need to Most vote? Do we need any kind of a vote to put a, a, a sum of money aside, or we just want to wait and Zach, wait till Zach gets back to us? Look, I would wait. Okay. And then Tom, we're going to take you up on the barbecue. <laughs> he's had some. He's had some ribs, Bobby. So he ruined my wife. <laughs> yep. They didn't Entertain make, a motion. They didn't make it too far, did they, Matthew? No, they didn't. I don't think they made it back to the dock. <laughs> I, I keep. I keep hearing Bobby trying to make a mo motion. Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye.